Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the power rule for integrals. So the power rule and it's for integrals. So the power rule for integrals looks something like this. Say you're trying to find, you're trying to integrate this x to the exponent of n. And well, obviously we take the x right here. And then what we have to do is this rule says that we will have x. And then we basically take this exponent, we add 1 to it. And then we basically take this whole thing, we copy this whole thing in the denominator, just like that. And then we obviously have to add our constant because we're doing an indefinite integral where we don't have bounds right here. This is quite similar to the power rule for finding the derivative. So let's say we're trying to find a derivative of x to the exponent of n. We would basically have to take this n and multiply. We have to bring it down. So we would have to bring it down. So we have x here, we brought it down to, at, to n, right? The n we brought it down. And then we have to subtract from subtract 1 from that exponent. So this is for finding the derivative. This is for finding the integral. So today we are focusing on how to find the integral using this power rule. So it's quite similar to a derivative. In this case, we have to subtract 1 for derivative, right, in the exponent, and then here we have to instead add 1, and then we have to divide by n plus 1, and here instead we just have to multiply by n, so it's like kind of like the opposite in some way. Think of it like that. Say we have to find the integral for this. Now, what we have to recognize is that here it's separated by addition and subtraction signs, and there is a property and there is an additivity property saying that if, let's say, we were adding, right, these two together, we can basically, oh, right, and there's the x here, and we have to basically split this up. So f of x here, dx plus g of x here, and then there's dx. So we can, so if we were to add these two together, we can find an integral of each one of them. Furthermore, there is a homogeneity property saying that if we have the integral with, let's say, some sort of constant being multiplied with f of x, we can basically take this constant out. So it would just basically become, we just have to find the integral of f of x and just multiply it with the constant. So this will be useful here in this case because we have constants such as 2 here and negative 4 over 3. And we have addition, so we can s separate these integrals. So, let's separate them. So we can separate this into one part, and we can separate this into another part. And we can separate this into another part. So we separate them, right? So there's three of these, right, being added together. Well, this is a subtraction sign, but we're adding negative, so I treat it as such. And now we can bring out these constants. So negative 4 over 3 and 2, we can bring them out with that big elongated s. So it's going to look something like this. Negative 4 over 3, we bring it out. x2 to the exponent 3, dx, plus 2, and then to go with this. Just like that. So we, we don't really have to do these steps. We could just integrate from this. I can show you how to do that in the second example. Basically integrate directly from this, skipping these steps. So we we're, let's start integrating, first of all. So, so the first step to evaluating these integrals, each one of these, we have to remember the power rule. So the power rule looks something like this. So we're going to ignore plus c for now. We're just going to look at this part mostly. Plus c will add at the end. 
later on. So let's say we had this one. We're going to evaluate this part. So for this part, we have our n being equal to 4, right? It corresponds. So our n is going to be equal to 4. And since our n is equal to 4, we're just going to plug in 4 right here into these n's. So it's just going to be x to the exponent of 4 plus 1. This is the n's here. And 4 plus 1, like that. And c we'll, we'll deal with later. And then we have x to the exponent of 5 over 5. So this part is going to be x to the exponent of 5 over 5. Now for this part. So I'm not going to do it on the side, but as you can see, we're just multiplying this to negative 4 over 3. We're just copying that. So this is being multiplied. So we're just going to multiply by this chunk. We're going to work on this chunk now. So for this part, we have to see that, okay, well, our n, right, in this case is going to be equal to 3. Our n is equal to 3. Since our n is equal to 3, we just plug in 3 for our n's, like that. So we basically took this whole thing and we applied it here. And our c we'll deal with at the very end. So we have this, and then we are going to work on this next part. So 2 times, this is to the exponent of 1, so the n is equal to 1. Since our n is equal to 1, we just apply this. So we are going to copy this, so we just plug in 1 right here and 1 right here. So our 1 is right here, add a 1. Now 1 right here, add a 1, just like this. And then our c at the end. As promised, well, this is going to have a c, right? And this is going to have a c added to it. This is going to have a c added to it. But if you combine them together, it's basically going to be a c in the end. So we don't have to really write the c here and here. And for all three, we just have to write it at the very end, just to show that, just to show that we have a constant that's being combined with all three of these. So yeah, so now we have this, and now we just have to simplify. So this is going to be 1 over 5 x to the exponent of 5. Here it's going to be negative 4 over 3 times x to the exponent of 4 over 4. And then here it's going to be 2 times x squared over 2 plus c. And then we can simplify even more. Here we have 4 and 4 at the top, cancel out. Here negative 1 over 3 times x to the exponent of 4, and then 2 and 2 cancel out, so it's just going to be x squared plus c. And this is our final answer to this question. Now let's say we were asked to find the integral for this part. So it's the same concept. So we could basically, um, we could basically say that this is equal to having it done to each one integral being done to each one. Like that, but you don't really have to write this. So we can still proceed just from this. And how do we do that? Well, basically all you have to do is, let's look at this, this exponent first before we even do that. So this is a square root, so it's gonna be to the exponent of half, and then this is minus 1 over 6, times x to the exponent of 7, and then the x. Well, we can basically just look at each part. We can integrate it without really putting the sign with each one. It's kind of tedious to write like, oh, to the exponent of a half, and then dx, and then minus 1 over 6, and then you have to like write all of these steps. These steps are really tedious, so we don't really have to do that just like I mentioned before. So what we have to do is just look at this and integrate it. So if we look at the power rule, all we have to do is add one, right, to top and copy this whole thing at the bottom, just like that. So copy this whole thing at the bottom. So we basically integrate this part. So we have done the first part. The second part, the, um, this um, coefficient is not gonna change, negative one over six. Just not going to change, so we're going to multiply, and this part is going to change. There's an x in it, so we are going to apply the same thing, like this. So 1 over 7 plus 1, this is 1 over 7 here, this is our n, and then 1 over 7 plus 1, just like that. And then we need to have a constant at the end, because there's going to be a constant here and a constant here, right? But, I mean, if you combine it, 
it's basically one constant. We're basically adding numbers together. We don't know what the constant is. It's, it's totally arbitrary, so it doesn't really matter, right? If we have two constants, we don't even know what they are. So yeah, and now we are going to evaluate this. So x to the exponent of half plus 2 over 2, right? Because this is 1. I'm just going to copy that. Here, minus 1 over 6 times x to the exponent of 1 over 7 plus, let's make the 7 over 7. Then here, 1 over 7 plus 7 over 7. And then we have to add c. And then here we have x to the exponent of 3 over 2. Here it's going to be 3 over 2, but it's the same thing at the top of the, the exponents and the denominator. Just notice that it's the same thing. Save yourself some time. So this is going to be x to the exponent of 8 over 7. Same thing as the denominator. So write that in and add c. And now we can see that this is 3 over 2. We can basically, we see that it's division, right? So if it's division, we can basically flip this, 3 over 2. Well, I mean, let's write it first so I can show you what I mean by that. The first part, minus 1 over 6 times x to the exponent of 8 over 7 divided by, so this, is, this, is, this corresponds to this, right? The brackets correspond to this, plus c like that. Then we could basically flip. So let's do the flipping part. Fun, fun flipping part. So this is going to be multiplying, right? Then we flip this over, so it's going to be 2 over 3. And then we have minus 1 over 6 times x to the exponent of 7 times 7 over 8. Doesn't matter which one we multiply first, so I took out the brackets. And we flip this, by the way, to 7 over 8 and plus c like that. So let's treat this whole thing as 1. And then we see, okay, well, this is going to be, if we combine this nicely, it would be 2 over 3 times x to the exponent of 3 over 2 minus, minus, well, what's 7 times 1? It's going to be 7. 6 times 8 is going to be 48. Then we just put in this x, then plus c. And that's it. This is our final answer to finding the integral, the indefinite integral for this, using the power rule. So, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Feel free to let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this video and whether it helped. Furthermore, give this video a huge thumbs up if it was very helpful. And also, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope to see you next time. Bye!